Welcome, and thank you for joining me in our first Bible Bubbles. To start our session, I'd like you to listen to a beautiful hymn, which is sung by a children's choir. I'm a member of an adult choir, and this is one of the songs that we were learning before the lockdown. I've been singing it all year long, and it's helped to keep me calm and to face our troubled times. It reminds me that we are never alone and we have a loving God on whose shoulders we can place all of our cares and our troubles so that we can feel light again. I hope you enjoyed the song. Okay, right, I hope by now that everyone got their printed materials, uh, printed sheets and materials so that we can get crafty later on. Now today, we're gonna to sing some songs, we're gonna play a game, we're gonna hear a Bible story, and we're going to make some lanterns. But most of all, I hope we're gonna have some fun. Now, as this is the first session, I'd like you to look at the screen and I hope you can see that within every bubble is a Bible. Now the Bible isn't just a book, it's a special record of all the things we know about God and his son, Jesus. When we read the Bible or listen to a Bible story, we can learn something about God and therefore get closer to him. Now at the moment, we're all in our family bubbles and times are strange because we're not allowed to do the things we like doing, like coming to church. And because of the coronavirus, we're not allowed to mix with people outside of our bubbles. However, there is an exception to that rule. There is someone that is in 
everyone's bubble. And that is God. God is always with us, no matter whom we are or where we are. So let's bow our heads for a short prayer. We bring ourselves to a moment of quiet, to a place of peace, to this place of safety and welcome. Here, we can cast off the cares of the world and for a time, we can think about you, Lord God. Dear Lord, help us to feel your generous love in our lives. Help us to use your light to guide our footsteps so that we can let our light shine on those we share time with. Amen. Now the theme for today is light. God and his son Jesus can light up our lives even in the darkest of times. We can also let our light shine in the darkness and help others to learn about God's amazing love. Now, we're going to sing a song and because you're at home, you can sing as loud as you like. And the first song is, Jesus Loves Me. The words will be on the screen, so please join in. I've put with those words. It reminds me of the beautiful display of autumn leaves that are outside. So perhaps when you see the beautiful autumn leaves, you'll remember that Jesus loves you. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky, but we're going to play a game. <laughs> and I'm relying on you joining in, so I'm not doing it all on my own. It's a short game. And it aims to find out how well children know the adults that are in their bubble and vice versa. I'm going to ask the children first. So let's see if you know the right answers. Adults, you can keep score of how many your children got right and let them know at the end of the three questions. Is everybody ready? Let's begin. Number one, where did your parents or carers meet? Hmm. Okay, I'll give you a little time to think about it and then I'll go to the second question. So where did your parents or carers meet? 
Next question, question number two. What is your dad's favorite food? What is your dad's favorite food? Mm, okay. I'll go on to the next question. I hope you're keeping up with me. What is your mum's favorite flower? Okay, what is your mum's favorite flower? Now, um, Brandon, if you're listening at home, I hope you said, let's see if you got it right. Did you know that I met with my husband at Cardiff University? If not, you've learned something. Um, my husband's favorite food is liver and onions. And my favorite flower is the freesia because it smells yummy and it was part of my wedding bouquet. Okay, so I'll find out when I see Brandon how many he got right, but how well did you do? Okay, next time the questions are for the adults. Here's the first one. What is your child's class teacher's name? This is for the dads. And I happen to know when I asked my husband, he didn't know this. What is your child's class teacher's name? Okay. The next one. What is your child's favorite food? Favorite food. Now, if you've got a lot of children, you've got a lot of things to remember here. Okay. Favorite food. And the last one is, who is your child's best friend? Okay. Now, since I'm playing along and I'm doing it with um, my nephew, Brandon, I'm going to say that, where is it? My child's class teacher, I think, is Mrs. Percival. But there's another one beginning with V as well, which I always get wrong. Veru, Vuru, Veru, Veru. Yes, there are, there are two teachers that I have to remember. Um, and I think Brandon's favorite food is sugar or lasagna. It's so hard to pick between those two, but I'm gonna go down with lasagna. And you can tell me at home whether I got it right. And then the last one, who is um, Brandon's favorite friend or best friend? And I'm gonna answer Jesus, because Jesus is everyone's best friend. Bit controversial there. Now, if you didn't know some of the answers, then you might have learned something useful about the people in your family bubble. It's good to find out about the people we live with. The more we know, the closer we can be. That's why when we use our bubbles, we can get closer to God. When we use our Bibles, I should say, Bibles and bubbles. You can play this game at home if you want. All you have to do is think of another set of questions and see who's best, the children, or the adults. Now, did you know that God knows all of the answers to all of the questions? Because God loves us all and he knows all of our thoughts and our feelings. And that's why we can pray to him and know that he will listen. Now, sometimes it's hard to know what to say to God in prayer. And that's why Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, which says everything we need to say. So let's join together and pray as Jesus taught us. I love this picture, especially the cheeky child at the end with one eye open. Now it's okay if you don't know the words to the Lord's Prayer off by heart. 
If, you, if so, just listen and join in with a big Adam Amen at the end. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Are you ready? Amen. <laughs> so it's time for a Bible story. This story is taken from the Sermon on the Mount, which is in Matthew chapter five. Jesus climbed to the top of a mountain because he had so many followers who wanted to hear what this special man had to say about God. The sermon is full of Jesus' views on the truly virtuous in his society. And he also talks about salt and light. Now I'm going to read just a short extract, which is about light. So I think it's appropriate to what we're doing today. Now, please get your tea lights ready. Here's mine. Turn it on. And what I'd like you to do is join in with the, um, the story I'm going to tell. And wherever I say light, I'd like you to raise your light above your head. Do we have a practice? Light. And up it goes. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to the whole of the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see the good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. Now your light is what's special about you. Your talents and your abilities that you can use to show your love to others and therefore make God proud. You could be kind, you could make someone laugh, you could smile at a stranger, or you could notice someone who's lonely and do something about it. Or you could donate to a food bank. There are lots and lots of ways you can yet let your light shine. Now, the next song we're going to sing together is called this little light of mine. If you want to join in, please do so. We can sing as loud as we like at home, but be warned, this song is very fast. If you like, you can hold your light up and let it shine. And if you feel like dancing around the room, you can do that too. Here it comes.
to get crafty. We're coming towards the end of our time together. And my intention is to show you how it's done and then leave you so that you can take your time um, making it and make sure that you've got something special to remember your first Bible bubbles. Let's get crafty. Okay, it's time to make our lanterns. Now, this is the one that I made. Um, what's nice about it is the, it's covered in tissue paper so that when you put the light on, the light shines through, but also the angel that I've put in there, you can only see if the light is on. I don't know whether you can see that there. It shows up much better in the dark. Um, and the same thing with the lid. I put a, an angel in there and when you put a light behind it, you can't really see, see it terribly well, but when you put the light behind it, it lights up a bit like a Batman symbol. So these are the things that you'll need for your lantern. Um, a jar, um, the lid, um, hopefully this has been taken off for you, but if not, I recommend you using something like a butter knife to just prise it off. You might need a little bit of help for that. You'll need the tissue paper, and there's a little bit of tissue paper that you'll need to cut into a circle to put into the lid. And also, um, I think I gave most people angels, but if you want um, a Jesus, I've got a Jesus in this one to be a little bit different. Um, and there in this one, that was a, an angel. And I've already stuck the angel into this one to save a little bit of time there. I've got a kneeling angel. And just position it wherever you want, put lots and lots of glue on and stick it on the inside. And the next thing to do, is to put the glue on the jar. Now, cover it as much as you can, because if it sticks down, that means it's gonna be easier to decorate. So I've got the glue all around. Now, how do I show you this? The best thing to do is to place it on a surface, put your tissue paper on, and then roll the tissue paper on and hopefully it meets in the middle. And there we have it. And you can just fold a little bit at the bottom. Okay. Now, once you've got your angel in place like that, then you can decorate around it. So put the, put the whatever's going inside in there. And then your smaller piece of tissue paper, as I've said, goes into the top and then either the insert of the angel, one of them was in a, a, a circle that you might have to trim to get into there, or there might just be a little figure that you can put in there and that goes on the top. And then the only thing to do is to decorate it however you want. Now you can put flowers, shapes, rainbows, or um, as well as putting some inspirational saying. Now mine, mine says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. It's quite nice when it's in there and these lights are flickering because then it will remind us to let our light shine. Um, that you can have a little look at. And what I suggest is you just pause the video or just do your own, but have fun making them. And we'll see you next time at the next Bible Bubbles. But before I go, I hope everyone got the printed sheets that came with the lantern materials. I've tried to include some age appropriate coloring in sheets and some puzzles. But one puzzle I put in everyone's pack was called Linda's Light Word Search. This one. Now, when you do this, if you look hard, you might find your own name. But also, if you're lucky, you might find God and you might find Jesus. And if you do, 
my work is done. May the Lord God bless you and keep you safe and well. Bye now.